The Power View feature is used to create attractive visualizations and report summaries of your worksheets with special emphasis on variables that are useful to you in a separate worksheet. And the elements that can be added to a Power View worksheet include charts, maps, KPIs, or key performance indicators, and hierarchies. Now the Power View will only include data from tables, and so if you haven't converted your data range into a table, you want to do so. And if you don't know how, then you can watch my Create Tables training videos. Assuming that you convert it, and there's my table there, then go ahead and select any cell within it, and then click on the Power View report. Now Microsoft had it removed from Excel in 2016, and it typically does this when the popularity of a feature drops, but we can add it to the Quick Access Toolbar, so let's do that. Come up here and right-click anywhere on it. Go down to Customize Quick Access Toolbar. Change it from Popular to All Commands, and then scroll down to the Eyes to insert a Power View report. And there it is. Insert a Power View report. Double-click to add it over to the right. Click Okie Dokie. And there it is. Make sure you have a cell selected within your table, then go ahead and click on it. And know that the Power View report requires Microsoft Silverlight application to be installed, and so if it asks you to enable it, go ahead. If it asks you to upgrade it, then go ahead and click Yes. And then you'll see right there our Power View sheet. And then we've got our original worksheet here that contains our table that it's based upon. Let's go back to the Power View worksheet. And you can see over here on the left is the report canvas, and the right is the field list and the task pane and it contains all the tables that are in the workbook and we only have one and so if you want to see all the tables click on all and the active one is the one that you have selected and so this is the one that we're working on and it's the only one and the fields here are either a category or value if it's a value it will have a sigma or a calculator icon next to it so we're dealing with numbers here we've got numbers in stock on order and the price and over here we've got the fields that have been checked over in the right and they're all checked by default. If I don't want to see the in stock or on order, then just go ahead and uncheck them in stock on order. And if it's too tiny for you, you can go ahead and hover over the bottom right hand corner resizing handle and click and drag it out. And then to increase the size of the font, come up here, click on the design tab, go to the text group. And there's the increase. Increase it enough to... Oh, we went too far. Well, we'll have to use the scrolly dealy unless we want to go ahead and expand it some more, which we can. And then if it's being cut off, you can go ahead and hover over up at the top the label for the column, the right-hand side, until you can get arrows pointing in opposite directions, then click and drag it. Okay, now we can see the rest of the number here. And also you can sort it, ascending or descending, when you click on one of the labels. So it's by category. Let's do it by essential oils ascending C's down to the Z's. And let's go ahead and click and drag this some more so we can separate them. There we go. And then we can go ahead and hover over the middle right resizing handle and click and drag that out. Cool. And if you want to go ahead and filter these, then you can see there's the filter part of the window here. If you want to filter it by category, go ahead and click and drag the field to it, as it says down below right here. Well, you just missed it. You can pause the video, but it says go ahead and click and drag a field that you want to filter by. And the text is really tiny. You can go ahead and close out of the field list here. And if you're like, oh, I want to bring it back, then come up here and click on the Power View tab and click on Field List to bring it back. And you can hover over it. It gives you a, a pop-up there, so now you can see it more clearly. And if you want to do antibacterial, anti-cancer, whatever you want to check to filter by, there you go. And then to go ahead and clear the filter, you can go ahead and uncheck all. Or if you got a few checked here, you can come up here and click on that little, it looks like an eraser. You probably can't see it, it's so tiny. Clear filter, you can see in the pop-up, click on it, restores it back, clears all the boxes here. Now if you want to view this visually, like maybe a chart, then let's come up here, click on the design tab, go to the switch visualization group, and you can do bar, column, or how about... Mm, pie chart. Click on that, give it a few seconds to figure it out, and hey, there we go. Go ahead and use the resizing handles to be able to see more or less of it, as it were. And then if you want to give your chart a title, you can come up here where it says click here to add a title. Cost chart, click off of it, and then down below, hover over any one of the slices. That one's frankincense, the essential oil at 93 bucks, and there it is, it represents it, frankincense. Let's go ahead and do something a bit more, like how about adding a second filter? 
This time let's do a value like price, click and drag it over to the filter area here. And then you've got these two numbers, the low end of the prices, which is $18.67, then the high end, which is 93, and the high end is going to be frankincense. I can't remember what the low end is. We can choose the, well, what appears to be the smallest slice here. There we go, clove. And you can hover over and click and drag the slider, and when you go from left to right, up here, it says it's going to be greater than or equal to $45.47. So it filters for anything greater than that. And you can see that frankincense at 93, and then 47 for Lang Lang, and then we got 82.33 for sandalwood. Now you can do it that way, or click and drag it back down, or go the other way, from right to left, by clicking and dragging, to going to is less than or equal to wherever you stop it at, in this case $58.81. And then to go ahead and clear that, you can go ahead and click on that clear filter little button there, that's hard to see. But it's the middle of the three buttons. This one just clears it out where you can go ahead and click on it to delete the filter. But if you want to bring it back, click and drag price back again. And there we go. And then you can toggle through the filter mode. So if you don't want to use the slidey bar, then go ahead and click on that first button there where it says list filter mode. Click on it. Converts it into check boxes where you can go ahead and actually check the values that are available there to be able to see the ones that you'd like. Cool. And then if you toggle again, let's see what it brings up next. Advanced filter mode, click on it. And then you get the option to choose is greater than or equal to, or you can click on the drop down arrow and choose something else like is less than or equal to and actually type in a number like 50. Hit enter. And there we go. There's everything less than 50. And then when you're done, you can go ahead and click clear to bring it all back. And you can just keep toggling through. There's only three that it toggles through. The slidey bar, the check boxes, and then actually entering in a value. Finally, the only chart that allows you to animate, if you want animation, is the scatter plot. And so let's go ahead and convert the pie into a scatter plot so I can show you the animation, which is pretty fun. Let's come up here, click on the design tab, go to the switch visualization group, and let's click on other chart to scatter. And there we go. All the plots are down at the bottom. They're cut off and they're tiny plots. And it's going along the x-axis. And if you try, you can hover over one, and that's clove, category antiparasitic, price is 1867. So you can see as we increase, we go all the way up to frankincense at $93. Now, if I want to be able to see these plots in animation mode where it goes from the smallest amount to the largest, one at a time, then let's go ahead over in the task pane, click and drag to scroll down to where it says play access. And I want to be able to see this in play, the price, click and drag that to the play access, and then give it a second, and there we go. Gives you the play button with the values that will be playing along. The lowest value all the way up to frankincense, which is $93. When I click play, it goes through, and you can see it moving along as it increases along the x-axis until it gets to the end. And that's not really helpful for me or doing a presentation because nobody can see it. So what I can do to clean it up, at least for my example here, is I can actually scroll up and include the price value in the Y value, the Y access field as well. So when I click and drag that, now because they're both the same, the X and the Y is going to plot them diagonally. And I want to be able to see these in a larger size than the tiny plots here. So if I click and drag the price to the size field, there you go. Okay, now I can see what we're doing here. So when I give the presentation or I want to analyze this, just go ahead and click on play. And you can see the different sizes based upon the values right there smack in the middle and not being cut off down at the bottom on the x-axis. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.